Well, good morning. If you have your Bibles, please get them out. If you've got them on your uh, iPhone or Pad or Samsung or whatever your device is, we're going to go to the Bible today. We're launching into a series today that we will hope will go uh, eight or nine weeks, depending on different uh, things that are happening right here on the island and with COVID-19 and with schooling. But we're hoping at least eight weeks that we can plant ourselves in God's wisdom. And here's something, maybe a mental picture for you to think about, because right here is a, a fancy workbench. And when I was 18, which is 25 years ago, I am so thankful to my wood shop teacher who, when he said, hey, you guys can make anything you want. And I was that 18-year-old kid, senior year, who thought, well, it's wood shop, I can get an A in that one. He said, you should make a workbench. And I said, why? Because you can make all kinds of things once you've built the bench. God's wisdom is something like a foundation on which we can build our lives. It is the, the, the very beginning of what we might think of as our journey to Christ, our understanding of who Jesus is. And so what we're going to do is plant ourselves for a couple of months in God's wisdom from the Proverbs and maybe a couple other places to answer the question, what does God have to say not just about life in general, but about specific issues, about parenting and about procrastination and about working well and about how I can live in marriage and be successful because we all want to be successful. And so if you'll stand with me, we're going to read from Proverbs chapter 1, just verses 1 through 7. And uh, I'll read them. You read silently along with me. These are the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, the very first seven verses here. He says, to know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise dealing and righteousness, justice and equity, to give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth. Let the wise hear and increase in learning and the one who understands obtain guidance. To understand a proverb and a saying, the wise words of the wise and their riddles, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Pray with me. Father, we pray that indeed you would show us your wisdom today. Would you help us to see you more clearly? It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. So we, uh, we do fear all kinds of things, and if you're in South Florida, you can breathe a sigh of relief because the hurricane has already passed. I think the wind speed here on Marco Island went from eight miles an hour to about 10 miles an hour, and then, the, and then the hurricane was gone. But we fear hurricanes, right? We, we are afraid of hurricanes, and we can go to the store and buy all kinds of uh, milk and eggs and bread because we fear what could happen because of, because of a hurricane. In fact, we, we also do fear uh, we, we fear what God has created, but we also fear what man has created. We, f we fear all kinds of different things. We fear sometimes our, our technology. How many people have asked the question, is this thing shooting rays of something through my brain? We have these, these fears that, that come from some sort of place where we're saying, is, is, that, is that going to hurt me? Is it going to harm me? We fear God's creation. We fear man's creation, but we, we even fear Man, sometimes we're afraid of man, and sometimes we're more afraid of man than of reality. We fear all kinds of things. What's funny is that we fear God's creation, and we fear man's creation. We even fear man, but we don't often fear God. And so what does it mean for us to, as we begin this series on wisdom, fear God? And so we're starting at the beginning, and the beginning here in our, in our chapter, and especially in verse 7, says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The reality is that if we want to find wisdom, if we want to gain wisdom, the Bible gives us a starting place. And we're going to look at that starting place today because, in fact, the beginning of wisdom is a proper view of reality. You need wisdom. Amen? I need wisdom. The world is chaotic, and we don't even know what kind of information to listen to 
to pursue and to allow to change our lives. You need wisdom and I need wisdom. And so let's seek together wisdom. And so we're going to ask three questions today. If you're writing notes and taking notes at home, what you want to ask is this. What is wisdom? The second question we'll ask today together is why do we even need wisdom? And the third question we'll answer is how do we get wisdom? So if you have your Bibles, you can open them up and have them ready right there in front of you for Proverbs chapter 1. And what we'll be doing is walking through Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 to 7, but we'll also be pulling from some other texts in the Bible to answer the question first, what is wisdom? Well, our text today said that the beginning of, of, uh, of knowledge is fearing the Lord, but let's look at some other texts we see in Job Chapter 8, verse 28. Would you call Job a wise man? Well, I think as you read through the book of Job in the Bible, you will begin to uncover a man who has great wisdom. Even in the midst of great suffering, Job chapter 8, verse 28 says, The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of of the Holy One is insight. All over the Old Testament, we see that there's a connection between fearing God and being wise. But let's go to the New Testament. You can see in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 7 to 10, that in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespass according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us. He gives us way more than we deserve. But then this phrase is interesting. It sticks out today. In all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will. There's a wisdom that's connected to how God operates. He, he gives us the, the ability to see his son Jesus because of his wisdom. And finally, you're asking, what is wisdom? What does it look like? What are some of the characteristics of it? One of the most famous verses in the Bible, if you want to know more about what is wisdom, is James chapter 3, especially verse 17. It says, but the wisdom from above is first pure, peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere and reading that list today reading through what is wisdom don't you more and more think in your own life don't I need wisdom as I'm uncovering what is wisdom in my own life I'm, I'm figuring out that I I don't have it I need it and this is a that was a list of of the things that are they are describing wisdom. I, I found a, a great theologian this last week, a pastor, who said this. I'm going to read the definition, but then I'm going to, I'm going to skinny it down to a, a definition that we'll be using for the next eight or nine weeks. And this is what this guy says. His name is Doug O'Donnell. He said, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. We just read that. And it's a continual, humble, and faithful submission to Yahweh, which compels one to hate evil and turn away from it, and it brings with it rewards better than all earthly treasures. The rewards of a love for and a knowledge of God. The rewards are a long life, confidence, satisfaction, and protection. And so he says, as a summary, it's an attitude of submission, an attitude of respect, an attitude of dependence and worship. Submission, respect, dependence, and worship. There's a Roman um, philosophy uh, writer, a phil philosopher back in, in early Rome who said this, you may have heard it, no man was ever wise by chance. You can't just sit around and laze all day and watch television and hope, hope to become a wise man. He was on to something. And so I want to connect the idea from Scripture and from uh, history that, that no man was ever wise by chance. And you know this by your common experience as well. We need wisdom. We want wisdom. The Bible even calls it one of the most valuable things that you can get, but we don't have it. We don't have this wisdom. And so what I want to help us along in over the next several weeks is to define wisdom this way. It's a skill in Christian living. So wisdom is a skill in Christian living. It is also knowledge applied, but wisdom is skill in Christian living. It's, it's knowing the reality, but then also doing it. Having a better understanding of the, the real world, what is reality, and then taking action. So it's skill. It's something you have to work on. You need 
You need somewhere to be able to, to hammer it out, to figure it out, to, to, to tweak it, to understand better what is the reality of the situation. But then it's taking action. And wisdom is skill in Christian living because as we find in Scripture and as we observe the world, we're finding more and more reality is helping us to see that there is a God. And so if you're living in this world and you deny the reality of a God, you've already missed your opportunity to be a wise man, says the Bible. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and fools despise wisdom. And what we want to do is to say, that is wisdom. How can I best parent? When should I retire? When I'm at work, how might I be the wisest worker, not just with my time, but with my efforts? Is it okay to trust this information that I'm getting? You see, the, the owning of the reality, I want to try to illustrate it like this. If wisdom is skill in Christian living, imagine a couple stories that you know, maybe from the Bible or other places. One I want to pull out is Daniel in the lion's den. You guys know, maybe some of you know this story. Even in, in, in pop culture, you, you may know the story of Daniel in the lion's den. Just imagine this. Daniel is in a den, a cave, with lions. Is he afraid of the lions? He's probably afraid of the lions in the sense that those lions could tear apart his flesh. Who is Daniel more afraid of in the lion's den? He is more afraid of God, which gives him the ability, and this is not a runaway, I'm really scared fear of God. Rather, this is a submission, a respect. It's a dependence, and it's even a worship in the middle of extreme fear but I fear the Lord more, which is to say something like this. Daniel owned the reality of the situation. These lions could tear me apart. Who's more powerful than a bunch of lions? It is the God who created the universe, including the lions. What is worship, or what is wisdom? Wisdom is skill in Christian living. Speaking of, uh, I, I just slipped a, a tongue there. I said, what is worship? There's a, we have an app, uh, marcochurch.com. You can go and you can get an app. And we have a connection to ESV. You can read the Bible, but you can also go to Version. And on our Version app, there's, there's a, a, a devotional. It's a seven-day devotional that's amazing. And I want to encourage you to think about how do I get, we're going to go down this road, how do I get wisdom? Well, I'm opening up the, the answer here. It's the Bible, and one of the ways that you can get wisdom is to go to this devotion. Just go into the little U version and search what is worship. And you'll find that this seven-day devotion on what is worship will unpack for you more and more about what it means to be a wise man. It's wisdom, and it begins with a fear of the Lord, some, some kind of a fear that even Daniel could be in the middle of a lion's den and know that God is powerful, more powerful than these lions. And so we've answered the question, what is wisdom? It is, it is in fact, wisdom is skill in Christian living. It's living in the middle of this world with the reality in mind. It's skill in Christian living. So let's answer briefly, why do we need wisdom? I almost don't need to answer this question because you live in the real world. Most of you. I think most of you live in the real world. And so you know that you need we need wisdom. In the middle of COVID-19 and racial tension in the United States and an election year, we need wisdom. Where can we find wisdom? We're getting there. First, we've answered, what is wisdom? It's skill in Christian living. Now, why do you need it? You can look at your text here. You can see right away, just scanning through the Bible, you can see that to know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight, he, he uses the words know, instruction, knowledge, increase in learning several times in this passage. So first we can say this, wisdom is intellectual. It is intellectually gratifying. It is intellectually consistent. What we can find is that wisdom is its instruction in wise dealing and prudence and knowledge. What we find in wisdom is knowledge. It begins with the fear of the Lord, but it includes reality. 
That is to say, people who read the Bible and believe in Jesus don't check your door. We don't check our, our brains at the door. In fact, we, we walk in fully faithful in Jesus and asking difficult questions, including things like, I don't understand, will you teach me? And this is also to say something like this, biblically speaking, science and faith can stand right next to each other and be logically consistent. Science and faith can live together. Wisdom is intellectual. It is something that you can know, you can understand words of insight. It's also practical though. See that again, it's in wise dealing, prudence, knowledge and discretion. It's practical, it, it actually, wisdom can help you to live in this world, in your career, parenting and in marriage and in dealing with COVID-19 and who to, even who to, who to vote for. The Bible deals with wisdom from God's point of view. It's practical, it's intellectual, but it's also moral and see, you can see this right in the middle of this text to give prudence to the simple. Right before that he says it's to, to give instruction in righteousness, justice, and equity. Where have you heard those words before? You hear them all over the news today because that's what our country, our nation, longs for. What, why do we long for those things? Because they are good and right. We want things like righteousness, justice, and equity. Wisdom is practical. It's intellectual. It is moral, but it's also mysterious. And don't miss this part right here, very, very end of this text, right before we get to verse 7. It says that what we're trying to do is to understand a proverb and a saying, the words of the wise and their riddles. In fact, all over the Bible we see evidence that sometimes wisdom is, is it's difficult to understand. There are places, especially even in the New Testament, where you, you can see that, that Jesus is saying wisdom is sometimes secret insight. Trying, trying to uncover the reality that sometimes we can't understand everything. So wisdom is, is to own the reality that God has created the universe and the God of the universe, he is unfathomable. We, in fact, even in our glorified state, when we're in his presence, we may not know everything there is to know. Can you imagine that? And if you're a learner, this is actually really good news. Who loves learning? Will you learn when you're in the presence of Jesus for glory? I think the answer is yes, because why? Only God knows everything. Will we know everything once we're in the presence of the Lord? We don't know for sure, but even in that question, even in that answer, there's mystery. So what we want to say is that wisdom is practical, it's intellectual, it's moral, it's mysterious, but it's also super valuable. In fact, all over the book of Proverbs, we can see the Proverbs themselves say things like that you should get wisdom. Proverbs chapter 4 just comes out and says, let your heart hold fast my words, keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get insight, do not forget, and do not turn away from the words of my mouth. Wisdom is valuable, it's moral, it's valuable, it's intellectual. It says all kinds of things about the practical things of life, and it's mysterious. We sometimes don't understand how to get it. Wisdom is so valuable, and yet we don't talk very much about it. An example might be something like, we have so many different abilities. We've learned so much as humans. Think of maybe the, the Tower of Babylon, but there are so many present-day realities of this. There are places where we know how to do so many things. The question, though, is should we do it? And what's the difference in the ability to do something and then the action. Well, I just described that as wisdom. Skill in Christian living. It's owning the reality of the universe, the world, and you, and taking action. It's considering wisdom, something so valuable that you want it. There's a commercial on television right now because they, in the middle of COVID-19, things have been pushed back, but if you search, you need a Bronco. You'll find the commercial. It happens to be in the commercial an orange Bronco. Some of you know I drive an orange Jeep. I think Jeep owners all across the United States are saying, what's the deal with Ford? Are they trying to take the market from Jeep? Well, if you watch the commercial, the very beginning says, you need a Bronco. Deep, manly voice. 
And then it goes on for 11, 12, 13 minutes describing why you need a Bronco. And in those minutes makes the case that if I am ever out in the mountains or needing to four wheel drive over rocks that are bigger than me, I need a Bronco. But then it brings it back down to earth and says, oh, but also if you're driving through the city streets, you need a Bronco. Why? Because it's not just able to go anywhere, but it has all these comforts and luxuries. And by the end, the very last phrase in the commercial says simply this, you need a Bronco. Now, how much more do I need wisdom than an orange 2021 Bronco? Sure, the Bronco is nice, but do I understand and do you understand the difference in the value between a thing that man has created? It may be beautiful and very nice, but how much more valuable is God's wisdom? Wisdom is skill in Christian living, and the reason that you need it is that wisdom is life. It is way more valuable than all of the things, get this, all of the things that he has created and all of the things that we have created. We need wisdom. And so the question is, and we've started at the beginning, how do we get wisdom? And the answer, thankfully, is all over Scripture, but I'm going to focus on one, one thing. And then throughout the next seven, eight weeks, what we're going to do is unpack. In fact, next week, I'm going to try to tackle the idea of parenting in a pandemic. We need wisdom to parent in a pandemic. We need wisdom to be able to figure out how we might live faithfully in this moment. But let's look at Scripture because the answer to the question, how do we get wisdom, begins right here. The text actually says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And we saw later in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, that the, that, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. As well, we can see in Isaiah, though, this question. Isaiah chapter 11 says, The Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. His delight will be in the fear of the Lord. This is Isaiah looking ahead at what might be the Messiah someday. But then if you fast forward into the book of Luke, which is a gospel, it describes the life of Jesus. How does Jesus grow up? Luke chapter 2, verse 52 says that Jesus grew in wisdom and stature. It also says that he grew in favor with the people and with the Lord. Isaiah 11 points toward Jesus. Luke chapter 2, verse 52 uh, points at Jesus. Matthew 12, the, Jesus is teaching and the people around him say that Jesus must be greater than Solomon because they hear him speaking and they see in him wisdom. They have some understanding of biblical wisdom and they say he's greater than Solomon. And then finally, Colossians chapter 2, this is Paul, an, an apostle. He's writing to one of the churches in particular and he's talking specifically about Jesus And then he says, in him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So wisdom is skill in Christian living. It's an an acquired skill. You have to work at it. It takes takes effort and there are tools. Why you need it is almost self-evident. You need it to live in this world and you can even just connect the words. Why do you need wisdom? You need wisdom for life. You need to be able to live life to the fullest right here. How do you get it? You see, wisdom is not just a, it's not a concept. And I earlier, I described it as an attitude. It's not just a a set of ideas. Wisdom is instead a person. The Bible is very clear and it connects consistently throughout that wisdom is Jesus. And so we see to fear the Lord is is simply to see the world as it really is and to respond properly. The Bible is simply helping us to see the world as it really is. You need wisdom. 
I need wisdom because it is life. This skill in Christian living results in life and not death. And there's plenty of death to go around. But what you and I need is wisdom. It's skill in Christian living. And how do you get it? You get it in Jesus. You see, there's a story of a man who was born colorblind. And he goes on to describe this reality where his brother was not colorblind and could see the world a little bit more clearly. And his brother would continue to help him to see, especially the colors red, and he would say something like this, hey, hey Johnny, that, that color is the, it's red, so you should stop your vehicle now. And then he gets the glasses. Maybe you've seen the glasses, especially uh, Greg, Dr. Poland, helped us to see through a video. You, you can have glasses that help you to see color and sometimes even improve in color-blinded people. There are people who can't see color But then once they are able to see color, what happens? They're overjoyed, and something else happens. They change. Why? Because they've been able to see the world as it really is. You might ask yourself this question, have I been able to see the world as it really is? Am I somebody who is described as as someone who is wise? You need wisdom. I need wisdom, and his name is Jesus. And the way that you get wisdom is to fear the Lord. How do you do that? It's not a fear run away from the Lord. It is a fear I submit to God himself. I respect him for who he is. I depend on him, and then I acknowledge the fact that he he covers me. He helps me. He's with me. He's present and helps me all over the place. How do I get that? Well, the Bible says that you believe in him. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is the Lord, you will be saved. He's the Son of God. He is Christ the Savior. And the Bible says he's our wisdom. We need Jesus. I'm looking forward to this adventure with you. We're going to be together maybe on the workbench being hammered out. Are you, are you willing? Are you ready to come with us? Because what we want to do is to be a people who are, are wise. And maybe let me just draw this last final connection. If you are a wise person, what ends up happening? You're reflecting the character of God. And what, what ends up being communicated? Jesus himself. And so as we are people who are wise, we communicate the hope of the gospel, which is what Steve pointed out earlier. We are a people who bring hope to people with the truth of Jesus. It's my prayer that we could be that as the church, as the people of God. Not just here, but around the world because now through technology, we are all over the world. Will you pray with me? Our Father, we're grateful indeed that you have given us the opportunities through your scriptures to see you more clearly and to see your son Jesus as the wisdom of the ages. Father, we pray indeed that you'd help us to trust Jesus And by your spirit, would you help us to worship you so that you get the glory. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.